Hi, everybody, and welcome to another great episode of Combs Teeny Tiny Town. So, as you can see, it's a busy day here on the layout. The, the yards and the sidings are filling up with cars. And as you can see, my new Conrail GP40 is pulling a load of fresh uh, freight cars around the track. So today what I wanted to do is share with you some of the recent freight cars that I purchased. And I'll admit I'm a, I'm a bit of a sucker for buying old junk. And sometimes I wonder if I, I might just be better off uh, buying brand new at full price. But, you know, part of me just likes the, the process of buying things, fixing them up, shining them up, cleaning them and getting them to work again, even if it uh, means uh, affecting some kind of a, a repair or a modification. So so what I'd like to do is show you a little bit about what I bought today and and uh, maybe talk a little bit about it. And um, what I'll do is I'll bring around the, uh, I'll bring around the uh, train to the end of the table here and we can take a closer look. Okay, so I'll just, pull it in here all right okay so so as you can see I've got a few pieces here so number one in the the lineup is this Penn Central 50 foot uh, uh, mechanical refrigerator type box car and then if we pull the train forward a little bit following that is another uh, temperature controlled mechanical uh, reefer this one, the Canadian National in a silver. And then moving along again, we have a an insulated box car. Uh, from what I understand, the yellow, uh, in, in this era of CP Rail, the yellow designated an insulated box car. Not, not a mechanical reefer, but uh, given Canada's cold climate, I guess uh, there was a need for insulated cars to keep products from uh, freezing, presumably. Now, again, we see a sort of a 50-foot... CN boxcar. Uh, interestingly enough, this one, uh, the manufacturer of this particular car, decided to put the French on the one side of the boxcar, Canadien National. So the, the only difference is the spelling of Canadian. And then on the opposite side of the car, they used the, the, the English uh, spelling of Canadian National. So that's a bit of a, an interesting curiosity. And then following that, we've got a Burlington Northern, again, a yellow uh, refrigerated 50 foot car. Uh, really on a tear with the 50-foot uh, refrigerated and insulated cars here. So, so again, my understanding is in this era of Burlington Northern, the yellow designated a, uh, a refrigerated car for express uh, deliveries of uh, fruit and things like that. And then you guessed it, following this is another 50-foot uh, refrigerated car. This one is, a, I think, an Atherin uh, blue box uh, type car with the Libby's famous foods um, uh, logo on the outside like a bit of a subtle billboard I suppose and now this one here is is very uh, kind of exciting and interesting to me this is I think a, an Evans all-door style car and I think uh, this is about as big a freight car as as I have on my layout I don't have anything larger uh, quite a unique one uh, but this is one that came to me uh, damaged and I'll have to show you a little bit more closely the repair I made to it. All right, and then after that, we have a, a, a small, early refrigerated 40-foot boxcar, uh, Canadian Pacific, uh, wood, of course, wood boxcar. And then we have the 40-foot uh, Canadian Pacific uh, standard uh, boxcar. And lastly, uh, this, Burlington Northern uh, caboose and this is kind of the to me this is the classic caboose here with the uh, the uh, the little second uh, raised level on it and I'm a sucker for for Burlington Northern so I don't know if you can see around my yard here I've got another Burlington Northern uh, 50 foot box car that I purchased uh, well actually this was a, an old one a long, long one that I've had since I was a kid I don't actually know where that came from so I'm, I am a sucker for anything Burlington Northern, and that includes uh, rolling stock and uh, locomotives. 
So yeah, so those are the cars. So let me just uh, take a few off the track to kind of show you a little bit about maybe the, the pluses and minuses, the pros and the cons of purchasing these things online. All right, so let me start by having a look at uh, what we have here. All right, so I'm just gonna set myself up here and we can uh, kind of take a look. I'll move this guy out of the way. This is a car that's under some modification right now. Okay, so as I mentioned, this 50-foot um, Canadian National Mechanical Reefer uh, was part of a lot of cars. I bought 14 freight cars uh, from the same seller. It was an online auction site that shall remain nameless. And yeah, you know, like these things, you look at the photographs and you try to assess something about the condition and it, and it seemed okay. But uh, when I went to actually uh, pick it up, I realized uh, it's pretty clear to me that the, the shell and the actual chassis here don't, don't match. The, uh, the chassis is a little bit smaller. It doesn't quite fit in. You can see there's little uh, spots there would on the proper chassis be um, little plastic tabs that snap into place and hold it in place. So basically you gotta be very careful lifting this off the track because this is just basically resting in there. So there's definitely, there's an unknown manufacturer of the shell and a different manufacturer of the body. Now this is a, says Bachman made in China. So this is later uh, issue Bachman and uh, usually uh, the way, uh, I mean, for me, I think one of the giveaways for the later production Bachman stuff, of course, is it's made in China. It's not made in Hong Kong. And um, you may notice um, the trucks as well as the, the couplers are held on with screws as opposed to some of this older type of truck here that would have just used a little plastic uh, tab that just sort of snapped into place. So in some ways, maybe it's better that they use these screws, uh, but over the long and the short of it was the there was um, a broken or a missing coupler, I should say, on on this end, and there was really no way for me to fasten it into place. I don't have a screw that that's that is that small, so what I did was I fashioned a small box here, and you can see I've just glued it into place and put my own uh, coupler in and just kind of glued it all together. So, I mean, it's a bit makeshifty, but I feel like this is already a Franken car. So uh, at the end of the day, it it doesn't really quite uh, hold together properly. And it's the kind of car that, you know, it'll look fine sitting in a yard, but it's not really a great, um, you know, a great example of a, of a used car. Uh, this is a, the other one ahead of it is a far, far nicer car. So let's see, moving along here, uh, some of the other ones in line. So we've got the, uh, as I say, the yellow CP rail. This is a an insulated car, box car, 50 footer. Um, not in bad shape. And really I'm a, a sucker for the Canadian stuff. I'm a Canadian at heart, of course. So uh, yeah, so I, I just kind of was interested in getting some of the other um, CP rail uh, colors that I don't have. I didn't have anything in yellow. So likewise, this one here, um, it's there is no brand specified on the bottom, but the trucks are made in Hong Kong. It's got kind of the older snap into um, uh, construction here. So I'm guessing it's probably, you know, Backman, Lifelike, um, you know, Cox. Could be any of those brands from, from my childhood, the 80s. Now, so this is the one I was talking about before. Okay, it's, uh, it's Canadian National, but on the one side, it's got your French, Canadien National, and then on this side, Canadian National. Looking at the bottom, you can see this is a Pemco car made in Hong Kong. And, and I think in one of my previous videos, I talked about how Pemco uh, was, was marketed in Canada under the name uh, Aurora. So this may have been marketed as such in Canada, and maybe that's why they had the the bilingual, the, the French and the Canadian on the car to try to appeal to that Canadian audience. So this may well have been sold as, as an Aurora branded um, car. 
so yeah, keeping with my kick for yellow, I, I, I'm a Burlington Northern uh, guy. I like the green cars, and I, I thought, you know, I don't have anything in yellow. So this is, again, uh, oh, it says a Backman uh, made in uh, Taiwan. Okay, so this has all plastic, no screws, and uh, it's more t the typical kind of construction that I'm familiar with. Now this is a an Atherin blue box type car. So, you know, the dead giveaway is you can see the metal weight here in the bottom. It's got the trucks with the screws. It's got plastic wheels with uh, metal axles and it's got the body mounted coupler. So they're, you know, they're, they're, I think it is an upgrade over some of the cheaper Backman, Pemco, Tyco kind of stuff. Uh, the couplers were, are a little stiff. They don't kind of snap back freely the front this one doesn't do a bad job this one is kind of a bit stuck in here so it could be worth upgrading at some point to a different coupler you're probably thinking of course why don't you put in proper magnetic kd couplers and you know i i do have them and <laughs> not enough for every car um i've got some of these magnetic type uh, kd couplers and you know that is going to be a project for another day and another video for sure Okay, so Libby's. And now this one here, this is a um, Backman made in ta Taiwan. Now these, uh, these have a very unusual type of long coupler. And in my experience, no matter how carefully wrapped these things are, they tend to break in transit. And that's exactly what happened. So here is the coupler. It came broken and you really can't do anything with it. You, I mean, you could try crazy gluing it, I suppose, but uh, it, I, for me, it was simpler to just take the, the box, cut it off the truck and mount it directly to the body, which is what I've done here with a standard size coupler. So it's not perfect. You know, you can kind of see it's a slightly different look but I actually think the box mounted body mounted coupler looks a bit better I think overall and it runs and it runs and that's the important thing I actually put I took the original um, all plastic uh, wheel coupler off and I put in an old Atherin type truck I should say not coupler truck so it's got a, a an Atherin type truck in place and I just used a small 3 8 inch um, screw to hold it in place here and and it works it rolls it uh, it hitches it's slightly high but it's still low enough that it grabs the car in front but i do love it it's got a it's got a nice look to it a nice color and it's unusual so i only got two 40 footers this time around i got this uh vintage looking um canadian pacific refrigerator it's got some detailing underneath with the um, the string, and you, uh, yeah, you can see this has kind of come a little bit loose here. And yeah, you know, it's not bad. Um, I'm unsure of the brand. It looks a bit like a yeah, it looks like an Atherin Roundhouse type car. And this, the price was right. I couldn't turn it down. I have one of these already, but uh, I'm a Canadian Pacific guy. I like Canadian Pacific. So 40 footer Atherin, blue box, body mounted couplers. Um, yeah, nice vintage car. And lastly, the caboose, my Burlington Northern caboose. This appears to be, um, it's made in Austria, Rocco it says. It's got a slightly different um, style of truck and it's these trucks are actually glued into place so if i had to if i was going to upgrade them i would need to actually do something a little bit more invasive they don't just pop right out and they do have body mounted couplers that appear to be uh, original and yeah you know mostly intact here most of the detailing is intact and you know there's a slight there's one piece missing here which again was a it broke during shipping but uh, yeah, you know, for the most part, um, I'm, I'm pleased. I think the two cars, uh, the Canadian, Canadian, 
Canadian National with the mismatched chassis was a bit of a disappointment. Hard to tell from looking at the pictures. And yeah, a little disappointed to have to affect a repair on this on this car. But overall, you know, with a little bit of, you know, trial and error, I was able to get it working. And you know what? I think that's what it's all about for me. Just tinkering, getting things working. And at the end of the day, having a few new toys to play with. Uh, and this is the last one in the series I can show you here. This Penn Central. And, you know, to be honest, this is a Backman Taiwan made car. To be honest, on my railroad, anything goes. I buy cars because I, I like the way they look. I like the variety. I like the color. I'm not a purist in any way. So um, that's what it's about. So I hope you guys keep having fun. And I hope you keep on railroading. And uh, we'll look forward to the next video. So thanks again. Stay safe. And um, thanks again for joining us here at Combs Teeny Tiny Town.